I am a climate scientist and I often get asked about climate change. People ask me, is it real? Is it caused by humans? I respond as any climate scientist would by saying, yes, it is real, and yes, humans are causing it. But that often leads to another question. How do you know these things? In this video, I will summarize how all climate scientists know that the world's climate is changing, and also how we know that humans are largely responsible for that change. You see, climate change is not a belief, and it's not debatable. I'm not going to be giving you my opinion in this video. I'm going to cover the facts that have emerged from many years of scientific analysis. Let's first look at visual examples of the Earth's changing climate. Here's a NASA image looking down at the Arctic from space. It shows the extent of sea ice in the Arctic in September of 2012, compared to the yellow line indicating where the sea ice should be at that time of the year based on long-term averages. The Arctic is often referred to as nature's thermometer because it is very sensitive to climate change and it warms faster than the rest of the globe due to two things. Firstly, ice is highly reflective and the loss of ice in the Arctic means that more of the sun's energy is absorbed by the oceans rather than being reflected back to space, which causes the Arctic to warm faster. Secondly, the Arctic is surrounded by large land masses, which heat up faster than the oceans do. In this figure, you can see the extensive loss of Arctic sea ice over the last 50 years. The y-axis is in millions of square kilometers. Here is more visual evidence of climate change. These photos show glacial retreat in Glacier National Park. The image on the left was taken in 1900 and the one on the right shows where there is no longer glacier in 2008. These photos show a treat of Muir Glacier in Alaska. On the left is 1941 and on the right 2004. In fact, all glaciers and sea ice around the world are retreating, in some cases by many miles. Glaciers have been present on Earth for thousands of years, but they are now shrinking over the time span of decades. That simply should not be occurring unless the global climate is warming and warming rapidly. This figure shows changes in surface air temperatures. The globe has warmed by up to 2 degrees Celsius in some places, with the global average warming around 1 degree Celsius. Now 1 degree Celsius may not seem like very much, but it is enough to alter the behaviour of the world's atmosphere and greatly increase the likelihood of extreme weather, such as heat waves. For example, if I warmed up your body temperature by one degree, you would have a fever and you'd not be able to function normally. We are seeing more extremes, as when we shift the temperature distribution to the right, we change the probability of rare events. You can think about this like a curved exam in a class. If I added a point to every student's exam, I increase the number of students who will receive A grades and even make it possible to achieve a score greater than 100%. Here is this playing out in the US. What we're looking at is the ratio of record high temperatures being broken in the red bars to record low temperatures being broken in the blue bars. If the climate was behaving normally, what we would expect is for record highs and record lows to be broken equally through time, i.e. these bars should be equal in size, signaling that it is just as likely to get extremes of hot and cold weather. However, what we actually see is twice as many high records being broken as low records being broken over the last two decades. Again, that indicates that we are warming and the atmosphere is no longer behaving randomly. We can see a similar thing happening in Europe. This is a figure showing summertime temperatures in Europe from the year 1500 through 2010. The hottest summers in that 500 year period are displayed at the right end of the figure. They are all summers that have occurred since the year 2000. This tells us that Europe is hotter now than at any other time during the last 500 years. And it's not just temperatures getting warmer. 
Other parts of the climate system are also changing. These figures show observed changes in the amount of rainfall. The right figure shows that the last 60 years has seen a lot heavier rainfall than the longer term average. Climate change directly affects rainfall. As the atmosphere warms, it can hold more moisture, which means that when a storm does happen, it will produce heavier rainfall. Think of the atmosphere like a tank, full of moisture, and under climate change, that tank is fuller, and storms can tap into that extra moisture. Climate change is also affecting other extremes, like hurricanes. Hurricanes get their energy from warm ocean surfaces, and with the oceans getting warmer because of climate change, we will likely see more intense hurricanes. Recent analysis of Hurricane Harvey, which dropped record-breaking rainfall on Texas in 2017, found that Harvey was six times more likely because of climate change. This figure shows that the world's sea level has risen by a little over half a foot due to melting ice and the thermal expansion of water in the world's oceans. This may not seem like much, but it is enough to make storm surge and coastal flooding that much worse when storms impact coastlines. It is also causing coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion into drinking supplies, and it's impacting ecosystems. For example, Miami now regularly floods due to higher sea levels. And storms like Sandy that hit New York will cause more flooding as the sea level is higher because of climate change. To sum up what I've covered so far, all visual and observational evidence supports that the climate is warming. This warming is evident in all aspects of the world's climate system. So what is causing these observed changes in the global climate? And how do we know it's because of humans? Let's look for an explanation together. The climate can change both naturally and because of human activity. Let's look at some natural causes first. All of the energy that we receive to drive weather and allow life to exist on our planet comes from the sun. Sometimes the sun puts out more or less energy, and thus that affects our climate. However, if we look at this figure, we can see that since 1980, solar output has actually been decreasing. But global temperatures continue to increase despite the sun's output decreasing. Therefore, the sun cannot explain the observed climate change. What about how we are orientated toward the sun? Maybe there have been changes in the Earth's path around the sun. Such changes in how we are orientated toward the sun do happen, and they are called Milankovitch cycles. They are responsible for taking us into and out of ice ages, through slow alterations to our path around the sun and the tilt of the Earth on its axis. But these changes happen gradually over thousands of years, and they cannot explain the current rapid climate change that is happening over decades rather than thousands of years. When volcanoes erupt, they can change the climate by spewing a lot of ash and gases up into the atmosphere. Volcanoes can affect the climate in two ways. Firstly, they can cause a cooling effect, as the ash blocks the sun's energy from entering the atmosphere, just like they're providing shade. Secondly, they can release large amounts of gases that have a warming effect on the atmosphere. However, there have not been any eruptions of a large enough magnitude to alter global climate in recent geologic time. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere can also change the climate. They are called greenhouse gases because they trap outgoing heat within our atmosphere, much like how a greenhouse keeps plants warm. These gases are naturally occurring and help to keep the Earth warm enough for life to exist. Without them, the planet would be on average around 75 degrees Fahrenheit colder. The problem is that over the last 250 years, human activity has been directly increasing the concentrations of these gases in the Earth's atmosphere. The change in these gases concentrations has been rapid, and they are now present in higher concentrations in the atmosphere than they have been for thousands of years. The increase of these gases is directly correlated with the observed climate change. 
So let's talk about the methods used by climate scientists to determine that human activity is causing climate change. Let's look at some figures from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. The first one shows global temperatures by year. The black line shows observations compiled from three independently produced data sets. And then there are two groupings of climate models. These models have been run backwards into the past to see how well they perform relative to the observed or known data. So this figure shows two really important things. Firstly, the observed global temperatures have increased by around 0.85 degrees Celsius relative to the year 1860. And secondly, that climate models can replicate that increase very accurately as they closely overlap with the black line. To explain how climate scientists know that humans have caused the observed warming and quantify the human effect, the second figure shows the same observational data and the same climate models, but this time all human influences have been removed. So things like greenhouse gas emissions and deforestation have been removed from the models. And now we can see that with only the natural drivers of our climate remaining, things like solar output, volcanic eruptions, and the Milankovitch cycles, the models and observations no longer line up. There should only be a 0.1 to 0.2 degrees Celsius increase, if anything, relative to the year 1860. Therefore, the vast majority of the observed warming has been caused by our activity. It cannot be explained by natural variability. And in actuality, this last figure shows that if only greenhouse gas emissions are considered, then the planet should be even warmer than it currently is. But this is being offset by a slight cooling effect from the current dip in solar output and an increase in aerosol emissions that block some of the sun's rays. And we have done the same scientific analysis around the entire world, at both the regional and global scale. And unfortunately, we always get the same answer. The observed climate change can only be explained by human activity.